If you haven't been keeping up, here's a brief update. On August 24th, Armored Core 6 released as the revival project of FromSoft's first hit series, Armored Core. Originally starting in 1997 and stopping in 2013, which came out to some mixed reviews. Having scoured a lot of people's problems, it greatly derives from the first boss, this giant ass helicopter, and a tendency for it to go out of bounds. Which sucks, yes, and the game sure is hard, something I'll attest to after getting scrubbed by Baltius for a good hour or so, but beyond the game being hard, there's a lesson to be learned. A lesson that honestly transcends Armored Core. I just wanted you to click on the video, so please, get some food and keep watching, because I've got some shit to share. Challenge in video games has been an increasingly hot topic as of late. As many people first experiencing Elden Ring are quick to say, this has ruined other games for me. And what I'd say in response is, you're only just now learning what type of games you like. Why would you stop trying new ones now? See, we live in a time where capitalism and consumer trends pretty much conquer every bit of media you see. Even now, this small channel is at the whims of algorithms and polymetrics that conduce the value of my words. If it were up to me, I'd hope more people would hear them. And likewise, I'd hope more people try more games. We as humans don't crave challenge in the sense of getting our ass kicked. We crave challenge in the sense of discovery and above all, learning. We seek videos of people who have something to say, something to reinforce with a new perspective or something to share to make our days just a bit brighter. We want new experiences. And if you need another example, there's Baldur's Gate 3. Raking in over 800,000 players at its peak into a genre that's gone wildly forgotten and underrated by using a familiar source and staying true to it. The same fantasy, innovation, and imagination you can employ in the real tabletop game is all fully realized in a video game format abiding to one intangible that I so love. Passion. When it feels like the developer has something they want to share with you, you'll fight tooth and nail to witness it. So many bore witness to the brilliant flame of Elden Ring's world. So many persisted amongst constant jeers of being called puppy by Lady Butterfly. So many sought Thum to prevent the world's destruction, and many hoped to unravel the mysteries of the universe. There have been so many reasons you've played a game, so many reasons you've loved them, but they all stem from that one genuine feeling that you can't copy or fake. It's especially apparent in Armored Core 6 as well. According to some, it's a departure from the previous entries, but one that hasn't been met by too much skepticism by self-titled veterans. But regardless of those emotions, there's a blatant feeling emitting from this project, and it's passion. This passion can be found in the controls, a schema that makes you use literally every button on your controller and puts incredible power into those that use a keyboard. It makes you master technique to the point where you're not so much playing a game, but genuinely piloting a mech. You have to maintain a good build for what combat tactic you're employing, whether you favor being fast and evasive or slow and powerful. The utility of your guns playing a major factor in encounters. Do you lean towards charged shots and tact positioning, or all out bullet barrages to hide your haymaker artillery? Are you maintaining your energy consumption efficiently? And even when you get to the brass tacks at the end of a mission rewarding your performance, your understanding of these controls is reflected it by a letter grade and costs incurred. The nuance of it on the surface feels overwhelming, but when you're in it, it becomes expectation. This is a hallmark of any great game. There is always, always more than meets the eye amongst the titles you've fallen in love with. Skyrim is very cookie cutter in terms of combat, but me, a guy who knows the ins and outs, or anyone else who's played the game, what's the true first thing you engage with? Alchemy. You use it to become f***ing loaded. In Fallout New Vegas, I know I can respec before leaving Good Springs, so my tag skills are always hinged around speech, barter, and explosives, so I can breeze through the first quest and get all the bonus XP I can muster. And at first, Armored Core 6 will absolutely be alien. Even watching gameplay might make no sense and look stupid or too fast to be controlled, but I assure you, that connection is so transparent. Once you feel it clicking, everything moves in slow motion. Your movement is with purpose. You start counting each shot, and before you even clear a mission, you'll have the awareness to recognize the quality of your performance immediately. It's intoxicating, because not only is the combat high octane, but the immersion is so present, you look at tasks like the mercenary you are. That same passion can even be found in the art design. Oh my god, it's marvelous! Especially when you finally make that mental connection that your robot is f***ing huge. Look how teeny tiny these helicopters are. 
I literally thought they were just goofy toy ones, until I realized I, I am a giant robot. These subtle connections make games click for me. They make me see a game as an experience, and that's why every Why You Should Play I make is founded on that exact philosophy. A game's mechanics can be fixed, barring the developer doesn't go under or aren't absorbed for how poor the initial release is. Thus, as long as the game works, I'll talk about how that package feels, because at the end of the day, when I look over my recordings, my sentiments and memories are all that remain. The same memories and thoughts that make me feel Kingdom Hearts 2 can still hold up today, and is still a f***ing banger. I guarantee you share similar sentiments about certain games. Sure, you can tell me how a game like Assassin's Creed plays, and I'm sure I can grasp it, but why do you play it? I think that's a far more telling answer. A game like Sekiro makes me feel like I'm holding a katana and am missing an arm. A game like Dark Souls 2 makes me feel like an explorer, like I'm lost and have nothing to follow but my nose. A game like Witcher 3 makes me feel like I'm a monster hunter, hero, and also have cool shit to say like winds howling. It's also found in the articulation of these mechs, familiarizing you with blasting five or six inputs at the same time. It puts you in a figurative driver's seat, where when you're told to destroy a target, you flatly respond, shut up, I know why I'm here. And you go and make some motherfucking fireworks. I love video games, and I appreciate developers that try to understand why we love what they make. There is no definitive solution to what makes a video game good, and more recently I've had to come to grips with picking apart these experiences for what it is that stands out to me. And it falls upon inconsequential things, like sound design in God of War, the ability to command troops in Mass Effect, the comedic tone of teachers in Bully, small things I pick out that are definitive aspects of the experience, that make something wholly unique within itself and make it worth my time. I hate it when a game feels similar to another title, and one example of a feeling I couldn't shake was that Cyberpunk, a game made in 2020, felt very much like Skyrim made in 2011. Graphically, sure they're different, but under the hood, the experiences didn't deviate. That trend is even more evident in the late 2000s, when developers were trying to piece together the Halo killer, with games falling out of talks because they sought to copy and not innovate. Or all the Battle Royale clones that piggybacked Fortnite, where many new titles fell into obscurity months later. I crave those unique qualities that scream a developer's or director's identity. Tell me, if you've ever played a game by Hideo Kojima, has any other game made by anyone else ever felt identical? I'd wager, no. As much as I dislike Todd Howard's tendency to overpromise, sell, and underdeliver, I can't say that there is any other studio or director that puts together sandbox RPGs quite like Elder Scrolls. They've cornered a market and made it wholly their own. It's exactly this same diversity that a game like Armor Core 6, in my eyes, seeks to propagate. It's a game unlike any within its genre, that seeks to do things differently to offer an experience unique to itself. Synonymous with FromSoft, you've got trademark boss fights, but ones that have refined spectacle to the point at which it even rivals the first Transformers movie. Even the explosions, they're fucking incredible! Everything down to the crunch of metal on metal contact, the ignition of your boosters, all of this sucking you into a world so grand, if you take a moment to soak it in, you'll realize this hasn't been done before. And all this ties into a greater motif. Gaming isn't dead. And anyone who says that is stupid. Live service games are abundant because those companies own creative licenses that forbid competitors, which is pretty ridiculous and sounds like monopolization, but games like Call of Duty, Madden, 2K amount for such a small number of releases and in my opinion, should be forgotten. I hope more people quit buying these games year in and year out, but especially more stop funding microtransactions and allowing this machine to exist, because there is so much flavor beyond that crap. Indie studios, now more than ever, have so many tools at their disposal to put together amazing products, and of the indie games I've played, they've all had meaningful and unique messages to impart. Valheim, Hades, and oh my god, Hollow Knight is amazing! But that'll get its own video in due time. There's even Vampire Survivors and Slay the Spire. I can't even name how many more exist. I really want Dredge, I've been eyeing Dead Cells, and even want to give Subnautica a shot. Even some giants have been on a roll. 
FromSoft. Square Enix apparently did really well with Final Fantasy 16. Nintendo literally hasn't slowed down since 1983 with the invention of Mario. And for the love of God, look at Capcom. They've been on an absolute tear. If anything, the last two years of releases should feel refreshing. There's been a return to form, and I hope we have a renaissance of the golden age that was PS2. PS2 was the time for experimentation, where video games had enough power and range to be whatever they wanted to be, and we saw a litany of unique entries trying to corner their own space. Whether it be the unique control schemes like Kingdom Hearts' take on the Final Fantasy ATB system, or the weird interpretation of duel monsters in The Duelists of the Roses, there was so much to play, and if you were a kid back then, you know from first-hand experience, every disc was something different. It didn't always feel good, but looking back on it now, that quality is something I love. To be shoved into something unfamiliar and asked to embrace and learn it. See, taking the time to learn the nuance of individual games just adds to the charm. And the charm here in Armored Core 6, I've found, is mastering your ideal weapons and the style of play you want to maximize. I've personally gone with a lightweight AC, I like dancing, and this gives me the most freedom to jump, glide, hover, and assault. Punching a baddie with a fully charged pile bunker and watching their mech explode into guts and gears gives that uncanny sense of showy viscera that God of War or Sekiro offers. But while putting it in this format where all my direct actions are so weighty, similar to knitting, Idle hands won't get you anywhere. You've got four weapons, you need to use them all. And putting together these impromptu combos does something for me that a fighter game can't. Where you've got an iconic character like Goku with an ungodly amount of strength, at the end of the day, it isn't yours. It's his, and you're only borrowing it. In Armored Core 6, you are Goku, figuratively. Your aptitude can literally make an encounter last as long as you allow it to. And once you realize that, you understand why the game feels so hard. You're a rookie, untrained, awakened from your hyperbolic space sleep, lobotomized, and immediately stuffed into a metal suit and forced to work. You're no one. Another pawn sent to destroy and reap rewards for the sake of your sponsor. But with what tools you've been given, you can become an advertisement for destruction. Shed your witless pride and engage in something new. It never hurts to try. Who knows, maybe this will be the one for you. Needless to say, I'm having a lot of fun with Armored Core 6. It is hard, but I've never done this before. Why would it be easy? Thanks for listening to my perspective. I hope to see you around next time. Please subscribe and like the video if it's worthy. Otherwise, now commences the state of the channel address. I know it's been a sizable gap. <laughs> I've, I've no excuse and I won't throw one your way. I just hope you feel the weight is worth what I provide. I want you to get to know me bit by bit and come away from these rants with something new to appreciate or think about. Hell, if you disagree or have something to add, let me know. I'll try to respond. Anyways, next up, I really, really want to get this art direction video done. And then finally, part 7 of the Dark Souls 3 series. I know where I want the videos to go, it's just a matter of pushing myself to that point. Uh, following the Dark Souls 3 series, my journey will take us to the formidable land of Japan, to a humble chateau known as Ashina. As for commentary videos, who knows, this is the first, I guess, but I plan to review AC6 in, you know, a more formal fashion, and Hollow Knight in due time. And from me to you, thank you again. I hope you have a good night, day, or evening. Bye-bye.